get in. Alright. Let's suck at this. So nerd days. Hi! <laughs> We're back! Uh, this is yet another stint of some sort of talk show. There are many like it, but this one is this one. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the one that's on YouTube, which is also this one. <laughs> the time machine. We don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> so this is some sort of talk show where we go through, well, we've started going through the monster, the Dungeons and Dragons monster manual from A to Z in the attempt of taking whichever monster is the topic of that current chapter chapter page whatever um and trying to do our own take or as best as we can to recreate that creature um last time we took a break last week but the last time we were live we did the last of the i'm gonna call them proper dragons because i was kind of embarrassed to need well not need but to go back to reference the today's topic which is the dragon turtle and to see that the it is actually listed as a dragon itself where i thought it was dragon adjacent you know just like how people like to try to lump dragonborn and kobolds into the dragon category when in reality they are not <laughs> Um, Which I forget if there's a term, but I want to say that like the the other dragons fall into this like a category of like true dragons. Which I don't think the other ones are false dragons, which is like a stupid choice of words in my opinion. But there is like a lesser and greater dragon, and we can talk about that eventually. <laughs> what separates them? What? Yes. Um. So that lets me bring up my dragon turtle graphic. Oh. So this is the um, Wizard of the Coast's um, depiction of the dragon turtle. As you can see, it is larger than most <laughs> sharks and definitely the lord over, hu over man ships. <laughs> so. Man ships. Man ships. Um, what is your sort of... Do you have, do you have any play history with the dragon turtle yeah actually uh i've ran into dragon turtles i want to say more often than i've actually ran into dragons like maybe not like if i really if i really get down the counting but uh there was a dragon turtle in uh that i got to experience in prince of the apocalypse i want to say and then i ran into a different dragon turtle in the tomb of annihilation um, and then I ran the Tomb of Annihilation, and we did more spin-off things. And I did, I <laughs> they did more things with that dragon turtle in a, a sense. And then I want to say there might have been like one or two other ones, but but I I think they're they're very interesting, but they're also I don't know they're very basic. Oh, and then I did a, there was another campaign that like somebody else was writing that I also ran into it a turtle, which was kind of fun. Like we totally. Had a super. I had. I had a Super Mario like moment. I was playing a monk, and my monk was a dapper, uh, like um, dwarf. So kind of big, burly, round fellow with a great big mustache. But like <laughs> as a monk, there's like only so many magical items that really make all that much of a difference, particularly like the things that people give you. Um, but my DM came up with these like hand wraps that, I, that like did random things if I got a critical. And then like me being relatively smart, I was like, ah, I went and bought some like potion. So I got a potion of like uh, growth. <laughs> so like we fought a dragon turtle and I drank a potion of growth. I super Mario'd up to get big. I jumped on the turtle and I hit it and I got a critical and it did fire damage. I was like, ah, I just got a, like a mushroom and a fire, like a <laughs> uh, fire flower. <laughs> It was it was beautiful. As a quick little off-topic stint, do you believe that Mario is small and gets larger as he consumes things, or do you think he is larger but 
is when he's damaged, he gets smaller. So he starts the game off injured in that sense. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I'm trying to remember, like, when you start, usually, do you start small or do you start kind of large? No, I think you start large because the game has to give you one or two hits. Otherwise, how cruel of a game would that be being yeah. your first game and you run into the first Goomba and just instantly die? <laughs> that, that would suck. Yeah, I want to say that you start off kind of at a medium size or the, your large size and then you, like, sh can shrink down once. I don't know. I forget. <laughs> Though I do like, I like the idea if we're looking at the world, like both of them are both alluring to me of just like, wouldn't it be weird to come up to a world where there's like, where like you standard size and there's giant fucking mushrooms and dinosaurs and like these shell dinosaurs that are even bigger than other things. Like, uh, like that is kind of a great moment to get even bigger. Like everything got so crazy, but it is kind of funny thinking of, of him as this specialized plumber that like had to shrink down to get into this world of turtles and mushrooms <laughs> and so like him getting a little bit bigger is actually more or less him retaining more of his actual size but like to get into the pipe world like he needed to get small anyways <laughs> yeah that'd be weird it's like i can't reach my hands too thick Arr! yeah okay <laughs> got it it's, it's funny i've had like dealings with turtles and it was funny me and this one guy played a similar character we did this a couple times it was very strange because we never planned on it but then we would make characters and we would have like the same class except different personalities which was like very fun to like uh be just like play off of each other but like we came up to this dragon turtle like that was guarding this area and like it put down its claw and said you must pay tribute and we both went like nah and we like <laughs> we were different kinds of paladins but we both technically because of our paladin's abilities had Misty Step, so we just Misty Step past it. <laughs> and just left the rest of our party to deal with it. But, like, none of us were like, I'm not gonna find a turtle. Like, I don't... I'm not paying anything. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier that the Dragon Turtle is relatively more basic. Um, and I would agree as far as, like, stats goes, but it is... It does lend itself to be more of the um, role play type encounter in and like I think a DM would really sort of short change the uh, the encounter if it was purely just um, you know here's dragon turtle now you guys have to DPS it until you guys can move on like that's yeah. not really what that's about um, because what you also alluded to was, yes, the Dragon Turtle does have a tendency to run um, blockades in certain <laughs> certain areas. Um, and I always thought that that was a really cool sort of, like, flavor text for it. And its size, its armament, all of that kind of gives... Uh, it lends itself to that, to that flavor... I really like it. I also like the fact that it doesn't actually breathe fire. <laughs> it just it just takes a mouthful of like seawater and just spits it out at a hot at a like scalding temperature. Which is weird and we will get to in my drawing, I guess, but like what does a what does a dragon turtle breathe when it's out of water? Like that's a, <laughs> a riddle. But I think it's funny cuz they do this thing with like dragon turtles of just like you're stuck in a precarious situation. And because it knows this, and you know this, it feels willing to demand tribute, and you're more or less, oftentimes you feel willing to, like, go along with this tribute demanding, because you're just like, yeah, we don't, like, you have the advantage. But if we think about any dragon, like, any dragon, really, all they have to, they can fly, and they can just choose a precarious area and do the same thing of just, like, the toll is this or your life, what do you want? Like, and, but they don't do that for other dragons too often, which is kind of, I think it's a lost, a lost kind of opportunity because it's a very simple thing. Like, why do, why not? But I would say that there is a history of like the fact that we feel so vulnerable on water, whereas like every other place, I think we were like, yeah, we're standing on solid ground, we can fight this. So, like, the only like, analogous thing would be if you're in a skyship or something 
So where you'd be like, ah, you know what? I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to fuck with things right now. Like I'm, I'm on a trip. There are innocent casuals here. Like, let's not do this. And with that, let's get into the first of what we did with all of this um, lore and flavor to it. So I took the, I didn't, I, I started to try to do just a straight up, just dragon turtle model, but um, I started to run out of time and stuff. And what actually sort of called to me a little, a little stronger was to actually flavor something toward the dragon turtle. So with all of the, um, with all the blockades, with all of the, the tolls that the dragon turtle demands, I thought that that would be kind of cool if there was a sort of like a pirate sort of um, clan or something that was sort of in line with the dragon turtle. And then like, what would that sort of look like? And so I did um, more of an armor. Oh, nope, that's you because you're first. I'm going first, though, because yours is better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's funny. So in the campaign that I ran, where I focused on a dragon turtle for a bit, like, I, I made a... Uh, it was, like, a cult, I guess, of turtles <laughs> that were in the underwater or the underground cavern uh, where the dragon t uh, turtle like stored all their treasure, and they're just pretty much like I don't know, they're there to serve and to organize their treasure, <laughs> and that was like a that was a really fun thing because like I had a thing of like where they were getting like super culty and like seeing themselves as like the heirs to the dragon kingdom and stuff, and it was funny everybody looking like, but you're a turtle though, like are you really heirs to the dragon kingdom? Like, dude, if all you know is the dragon turtle, then yeah, that would make perfect sense. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I have this file on my computer that just, um, stores a bunch of, like, mask ideas that I've had for eons, it feels like. Um, mm. but I never really spend a lot of time on that because I usually get distracted with doing, um, other sort of more character models. So I decided to reopen this file and actually do more of a, um... Because I was already trying to theme around what these pirates or what this, you know, this uh, seafaring clan would sort of look like. I was like, all right, cool. So let's do more of an armament sort of thing. So I decided to go with um, <clears throat> more like a more like a war mask type of thing. And so I, I started looking around for a bunch of different inspirations. So like the um, the general design of what a lot of the kappas will be depicted as because they take a very humanoid shape but they still have what's relatively a turtle face um mm -hmm. and then to also accentuate for anyone who's super deep into like digimon knowledge um tortamon is another one but i use that inspiration more for the shell um than i did for the quote unquote beak. That's weird, man. Yeah. I was with you on like Digimon too, but I cannot remember Tortamon. <laughs> he's just a big That's... he's just a big a yellow while. spike turtle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Not ringing any bells at this moment. Some games to replay, I guess. <laughs> uh yeah, okay, so, so are you thinking like uh, like a mempel, like a, a face mask mm -hmm. on this? Or are you like that's how it, of yeah, that's it? how it started. But then I was like, I I can't just leave it at that. That looks kind of weird. I also went into this knowing that I'd need like uh, like a back plate or like a shell or something, because otherwise mm -hmm. that could just be an eagle mask or you know or something. And I yeah probably will reuse that top thing to also make an eagle mask, but. This is this is dragon turtle theme, so I need I need to go with dragon turtle stuff. And it's funny I haven't I like I'm like seeing ideas in my head and thinking about it and like I don't know I'm curious to see what's gonna come and where you're going to add stuff. But I think that's something that we've been like I don't know we started this out with like 
doing monsters and like just redesigning the monsters themselves. And every once in a while, we have like a half, a, like a different idea kind of thing. But really, we could have done a pretty cool thing of like going through and creating armor and like weapons and gear based off of each monster. <laughs> like it could have been like uh, our whole segment could be like like the D and D monster manual um, meets like. Uh, monster hunter crafting <laughs> yeah i mean that was an idea that i was playing around with but i liked the fluidity of just if you feel like it then go for it otherwise you could always default to just trying to recreate the creature in the monster manual yeah um, and i honestly like i know how to draw animals and stuff but i don't I don't always focus, like, it's not my, my area of focus, so I kind of liked that challenge. So this is what I went with. Um, there could have been a back shell plate. I can't remember what anime it was, but there was a character that kind of jumped around a lot, but had this big... Oh, it's fucking Dragon Ball Z. Uh, <laughs> with Master Roshi's tortoise, you know, tortoise shell thing. But... I don't know if you ever really used that, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, I didn't, I didn't really want to make a full mannequin, and I also didn't like the fact that the mask is covering up one portion of the head, and the rest of it is just kind of bare, so, um, I decided to move the tortoise shell higher, <laughs> and then mm. make sort of this, um, Star Wars Empire-esque helmet sort of thing i was saying like beetles mullet but <laughs> <laughs> it's funny seeing this as like darth vader kind of thing and thinking of that scene of like luke take off my mask <laughs> well to be fair again the japanese um oh, yeah. samurai helmet still had that same design before all of that but um, it was their, but their design is a lot more thought out, and it's much more minimalistic than what um, Lucas did with his Empire's helmets. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I think it still, it I think it still plays well. I mean, as long as I can get the jags and the spikes correctly. And so it's interesting because um, there's going to come a time where I'm trying to figure out how to get the best spines possible or the best spikes possible. Um, so again, if you go out there and you Google Tortamon, you'll kind of see the more jags that I'm kind of looking for. Because in the depiction of the dragon turtle that we showed you earlier, those, sp those jags are a lot more subtle. I would, I would, I would say, whereas, um, Portamons is just, it's, it's just like a freaking. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, I it's see. a lot crazy. It's like a bunch of, like, pyramids. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm just trying to figure out how to, how to even, like, what do I do? Do I do it individually? Because check or deselect isn't really working for me. Because um, every once in a while, if you if the camera stays at one angle, you can't really see it. But every once in a while, if you move the camera just right, you can see that um, two of the pyramids are actually connecting. So it creates kind of this like um, triangular tent kind of shape. And I really hate that. So I'm trying different <laughs> sort of techniques to try to get more of a jag thing in a short amount of time. Because ultimately what I could do is go through and custom it, like, and just specifically select vertices and then pull them out to get me that jag that I want. Mm -hmm. But... <sighs> It's tedious, and it's not really practicing the other functions that are within Blender. So I was trying to look through the library of the other tools that existed to see what I could do and um, try to remember how they functioned. But in doing so, 
right around it's either here or it's like gonna be a couple seconds later but I've I realized that I've gone one step further than what I need for a full control Z reset that was really frustrating <laughs> <laughs> oh so um, for anyone confused control s is my command in OBS to bring up that little muted asset and control no alt s alt s is my command to bring that up but alt s is also the command to reset the scale within blender so um and mm -hmm. i'm not looking at OBS the entire time i'm doing this so this stays up there for quite some time but it's not relevant to what, to what we're doing here um, so yeah, it's, it, you know, the Jags aren't really coming out how I originally thought they would, but, um, I get to a point where I'm not too annoyed at looking them, at looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> Turtle shells are really intricate. They're very interesting. And I, I, I really, I like turtles. I've enjoyed it. Like, I don't know. Like when poke, like I was so happy when Pokemon, like in their first generation, like a turtle was like the choice of things you could be. I'm like, yes, yes give me that Squirtle. Uh, and then I had like I had a pet turtle for a while. Like so, I think I'm a little bit obsessed in like how they look. But it's kind of it's weird that just doing jagged things is like not completely right at the same time. But it's like there are so many different kind of shell types. Like there's a lot of like playing around that you have to do to get it to like a good fashion in the same way that like making hair you just like if you just make a bunch of lines it doesn't look like hair there is like kind of a pattern to it but there's so many different kinds of hair out there that it's like it is quite a journey trying to figure out what is the right like simplification and complicate uh, and, like uh details and make it seem correct that's weird i thought I got rid of this by now. Mm. That's kind of frustrating. So have you ever got to play with a dragon turtle in any of your games? I think we had the threat of one come. So it was kind of like um, 2000 Leagues Under the Sea, where you can kind of see it in the distance and it's coming at your ship. Mm. But I think we got out of that somehow. It's been a very long time since I've played like a campaign proper that mm. I don't really remember those sort of aspects. Um, that's the other kind of d disappointing thing is that even if your DM puts in something that is um, meant to be a an interesting role play point um there's always the option all right i don't i know for a fact that i got rid of this muted thing by now why is it being stupid um there it goes okay <laughs> um but yeah i uh, there's always the option to run away. <laughs> and it's not an option that a lot of players take because they all, you know, because it's... I think we've been so ingrained in the video game logic that if if I went through all this rigmarole to get the key and the key unlocks this door, then I should, through all of that turmoil, to just to get the key, I should be prepared for whatever is behind this door which is not always the case in Dungeon Dragons, and it's not always the case that the DM presses. It's not a case that the DM should press often, but every once in a while, maybe like one every three months or so, like depending on how often you have your you have meetings in your campaign, um, every once in a while the DM should just throw a Tyrannosaurus Rex at a group of level threes, you know? Just have that situation where they should look at that and go, we're underleveled, we have to run. Mm. Um, I find those instances valuable. So yeah. at this point, and it's hard to run correctly. Like I think, and even storytelling wise, like you need to set up 
for players and for like you know the audience to see somebody that you respect and you understand in a casual way this person is as powerful or if not more powerful than i am and then comes like the big bad creature that destroys that person so they can get really go like oh okay <laughs> i see well like oftentimes i like dms will uh, or storytellers like of various uh, caliber um, or various medium will just come in and just throw something at it, and we have no context to like how powerful this is, like to know how they're supposed to react. So I don't know. I was just playing around with a simpler lighting scheme here. It's also a simpler sort of situation, so it's not as complex as like a posed creature or anything mm -hmm. but i'm very i'm with a lot of tweaking i'm satisfied I'm, I'm finally satisfied with how the helmet sort of came out i probably could have made the walls of it toward the nape of the neck a lot thinner but mm. it is supposed to be based after a heavily armored dragon turtle so i mm -hmm. there's a part of me that wants to just say you know what that's that's real that's really heavy but that's really armored which, mm. in saying that, it reminded me about the armor that I would make um, when I was, like, a little kid about um, the armor that I would make with the palm tree husks. And those things were thick, but they were also light. And, like, mm. very little could get through that. Um, so, with that being said, the dragon turtle armor doesn't necessarily have to be, like straight up metal or even like dragon turtle hide it could it could be something that's like made into the facade of a dragon turtle hmm. um so this is what the end i think this is what the end result looks like yes so that's the turntable um it's a little messy in parts but you know it worked <laughs> hey, it's funny are you aware of like the Chi not Chinese, the Korean uh like turtle ships? Uh sort of. Only through Age of Empires. But even then I think <laughs> yeah, they I, so. I think they lumped them in with the Chinese instead. Hmm. Strange. But that was one of those things I was like, I don't know, that I was like kind of thinking of when we were looking at this. of uh, like I don't know turtle appreciative like sailors and that was like it was specifically and like an engineering feat and something that was very surprising uh for like the invading like japanese that were like attacking korea that like at the time like to like uh protect against both bombardments of like cannons uh and like guns and arrows and stuff as well as like people trying to board they uh like Koreans like developed these ships that had like full plating over the top in a, like kind of a a domed sort of shell like thing, and so these like turtle ships are relatively famous. But I think that's kind of a a neat sort of connection point. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of that too. Like maybe instead of doing like armor or something, I could do um, something more along the lines of um, a vehicle because I, I don't think I've done that yet <laughs> but mm. uh vehicles tend to be a lot more complex and it intimidates me <laughs> so <laughs> yeah there's a lot of a lot of pieces and stuff especially but. with the past like i could have done a ship or something here but um i feel like i'd get a lot of flack for not like because what i've tempted to do is one solid piece for like the hull and then I would proceed to get a bunch of flack about being like, uh, but where are the slats that are that consist of the hull? Mm. And, you know, all these other things, like why do you not have like uh portcullis not portcullises, just portholes in general so that people can like put oars out the side or, you know, shoot arrows from the from them, whatever. So um, many things. Yeah, but that's just my creative paranoia of there's always someone out there that's willing to yell at you about stuff um i'm sure no it's one funny can which actually do that i'm not gonna call this as yelling but uh it's interesting looking at this and thinking about like the bits that i know about like helmets and masks and stuff like 
thinking like, where are our connector pieces? How does the helmet stay on from like, how is it not jiggling around? Is that connected to like the mask? Like, yeah, it's uh, all tied in and tied behind the head. <laughs> yeah. But then if the mask is tied in and tied around the head, what, is, how is the helmet connected? Is that like, I don't know. <laughs> Lots of little questions. Like, but always when it comes down to design things, there's always like, where do you, you know, where do you put your effort and like, how much do I have to like go through? Like, oh, did I think about like, we have our like turtle shell thing, but then is there like a cloth thing that goes under there? So your head doesn't like just not resting on whatever this uh, real or fake shell is. And then like, where do ears go? Like too much stuff. Like screw it. This is fantasy. We're making turtle armor. Yeah. And you know what? I, I thought I, I, I kind of looked at this and I had a um, when I was done, I kind of sat back and just let the thing render. And while I was rendering, um, a bunch of different thoughts came to my mind. So the first one is I could re, re I could reappropriate this specific design and change just the helmet. So where this would just be like the kind of basic um, sort of design, I could also add more of a flourish. So like how um, a lot of samurai would wear their um, their clan crest or something on hmm. their helmet i could add you know certain things like maybe um some cool ornamental version of like a bowl or something up there to make it more kappa like um because i kind of really like this design and i thought that, that would be a really cool sort of like fear like a presentation of like a fear aspect because kappa were basically just like the scary like one of the many scary things that you didn't want to like think of like those tales you didn't want to think of those tales when you were walking down like a misty you know like a misty forest path or something because it's just like i don't want to a drown or b be drained of all my blood um and then another thought was since i haven't heard it yet um i wonder if it's just me but I got major shredder vibes after I was done with this. I was just like, man, mm. <laughs> I wonder if he ever wanted to like taunt the turtles by um, exchanging his um, like his uh, car grill for more of like a <laughs> like a turtle like face plate and just be like, haha, now I am the turtle. <laughs> I don't know. Thinking about like the Ninja Turtles like personality and stuff it feels like it would be a joke doing it the other way that they would be like dude let's make a shredder costume except they'll make it all like <laughs> turtle bits like yeah that'd be funny but i don't know i think of even talking about that it was kind of funny like looking up image resources and stuff and seeing ways that people designed um turtles as well as dragon turtles as well as like um various things like Every once in a while, I fall down into a path of liking at, looking at Ninja Turtle stuff. I was like, oh, this is cool. This is a cool redesign. I like this one. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Like, that, it's kind of, I don't know. It's interesting. If you've ever watched turtles, like sea turtles, like fighting each other, they do this like weird thing where they're like, they do passes and they like turn their back to each other so they can block. <laughs> and like, I don't know, wearing armor in a specific way. Like, I know that there's several Japanese fighting techniques because the way that their helmets are made they are kind of made to take a decent amount of force and deflect it so there are like techniques where you really just lean in and put your head into the attack because like their weapon goes past you and then your weapon goes into them uh, it would be funny fighting seeing how i don't know people that revere a turtle like and wear this specialized kind of armor fight in yeah i think XYZ i way. I think I would totally, if I did more of the body, I would totally do more of like a Roshi shell, like, like further mm. down and just have it sort of like plate from the, um, from the helmet. So, I mean, there's still two separate pieces, but it's just, you know, one sort of just, um, roof tiles into the lower bit, but that would be just so much like defense. Like that's an AC of like 18 at least. <laughs> mm. And I was thinking usually... kind of funny. Like, I've seen this with, like, kobolds, I want to say, and maybe, like, lizard folk of, like, they revere and worship a dragon. And then there's, like, a couple that just collect, like, molted dragon scales to, like, then make ship armor. But it would be interesting seeing, like, uh, you know, pirates and stuff or, like, whatever sailor cult that, like, takes the molted bits of, like, shell laminate to, like, <laughs> make stuff. And, like, I don't know. 
Like you're gonna get some. I don't know. Depending how the they the how big the dragon turtle is, you can get some really big stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it. There's definitely a window in there for some monster hunter shenanigans. Um, mm. So let us move on into what you have done. So, like what? Blah, 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 where is my asset? Right here. All right. Okay. And so we go. And three, two. Oh, nope, that's me. Forgetting that you're <laughs> well, the I keep forgetting that you're the first one. There we go. Yeah. You'll see mine kind of starts off with like crazy colors, but it's cause like I was goofing around with like colors playing with the contrast later, and then I was like, I don't know, just like flipping around and then like it that it changed colors like, ooh, I like this. Let's roll with it. I think this gave it the energy. But I had a lot of trouble, like, designing how the tur the dragon turtle's body was going to go, as well as I had trouble spelling dragon turtle from the beginning, if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, like, it's tricky because if you make just a turtle, then it's just a turtle. So you do need kind of a scene. So that, and that scene helps you get a sense of scale. But then I think you also need, like, to change, like, the arms, legs, uh, head and specifically it's kind of a weird thing but like of attacks the dragon turtle attacks with its tail so it kind of needs a substantial tail <laughs> it's kind of odd which makes like the body parts all big but to make it feel like a turtle you still need to have like a big body so i was having so much trouble finding a good composition that ended up showing things but i ended up on this one and for me i um, I have a fascination with a variety of different, like, Asian cultures and stuff. So I was looking at, uh, you'll see that, like, the ships get designed in more of a junk uh, sail fashion. But, like, the head of the dragon turtle, I was kind of looking at um, some designs originally from, like, the, the depictions of dragon turtles in, like, Chinese mythology and things. And then, like, uh, n north, south, east, and west are represented by uh, different different creatures. So like east is a dragon, or east is a, yeah, east is a dragon, west is a tiger. Um, south is like a phoenix, more or less, uh, sometimes it's called the vermilion bird. Uh, but north is this uh, turtle uh, snake thing. Sometimes it's a snake with a turtle, sometimes it's a turtle with a snake for uh, a tail. Uh, and then sometimes it's just designed as a dragon turtle. <laughs> so, like, I kind of played around with that, and then went to it's sort of like this, I wanted, like, a kaiju-esque kind of chin. And I really like, I don't know, the mating rituals of, like, red-eared sliders. They have these, like, long, like, fingers, and they do this, like, little thing, like, w finger wiggle thing at, like, the lady turtles to kind of, like, I don't know, hypnotize them into, like, having sex with them. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, a claw attack is pretty typical of dragons, but also the dragon turtle in D&D. Uh, I'm kind of happy with it. It was it was tricky to try to fit in all those things. I really appreciate the kaiju angle. <laughs> it's like it should be out in the middle of the ocean somewhere, but it's obviously just standing on its raw power. <laughs> yeah, and so when I ran a, a thing, or when you kind of like look up D and D and you look at the stats of a dragon turtle, um, the dragon turtle like CR wise is as strong, if not stronger, than the adult versions of most, like, true dragons. I, and, like, the separation from true dragons from these, I don't know, lesser dragons, false dragons, is that a true dragon, they get stronger with age, and they technically are immortal, so they can just get stronger forever, or something like that, you know? Um, whereas a, a false dragon is, like, humans, they... Uh, when they grow, they get they reach their peak area of like their full growth and like strength, and then they eventually start to degrade from there. So it's kind of neat and interesting, but they like they paint dragon turtles as like not as smart and magically inclined as other dragons, like a red dragon or a silver dragon. But why not? Why couldn't they be? Like if like an orc can be a mage, you know, <laughs> like. Those are just stats and like relies on that specific turtle. So like I was thinking like how scary would it be if a dragon turtle 
just knew the simple spell of like water walking and then just like ah ha ha bitches had, like and I then just... like maybe they could dispel it swim again i just had the and thought come my, into my, my head group. that the dragon turtle is just like <laughs> In it's it's actually a little small thing and it's in a bathtub and one of his ships is sinking and it's like Mom I broke my ship again. <laughs> right. It's funny, there's this uh artist, uh uh iguana mouth, I think they go by. Um and they draw dragons with very interesting hordes. And like the dragon, uh, like the idea is like all dragons like to hoard things, but each dragon has their specific kind of thing that they like hoarding. Um, and they're very ridiculous hordes. But it was kind of funny, like thinking of like, I mean, what if the dragon turtle didn't want any like buddy's stupid baubles? Like, what if they're just like ship collectors? I'm like, oh man, I want one of these. And then I like I swam over to this place and I stole one of these and <gasps> a tugboat. Yes! <laughs> Give me your tugboat or I'll destroy this entire ship. Like, port. <laughs> but I kind of struggle. Like, I will, like, draw and erase several times, like, the head. Um, because trying to find the right angle and balance of, like, top jaw to, like, bottom jaw was, like, weird. Hmm. Yeah, that was one thing that I was trying to struggle with, too, is, like, how, like, do I want to include um, the fins into my, like, armor design or something? Like, it could have been a, like, a shoulder um, pauldron or, like, a combination of, like, chest, plate, shoulder, guard type thing. Mm -hmm. um, but the minute that I was done with the helmet, I was just like, I want to go to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's hard. And, like, I always had trouble because, like, there's some depictions of people's designs of dragon turtles where their limbs are more, like, uh, freshwater turtle-y. Like, this one is somewhere closer to freshwater turtle, like, more like a, a lizard. Um, and then some other ones that like to do them as, like, the flippers, as, like, saltwater uh, turtles. But... I wanted, I don't know, I like the, the idea of it having, like, pretty substantial, like, claws and webbed claws enough, but also enough of an arm and claw action so it feels more like dragons and, like, freshwater turtles. Yeah, it's kind of cool how I was referencing Tortamon and all of, you know, and, its, and all of its spines and stuff, and yet yours actually does have a very tortoise-esque shell, whereas most... You know, aqua turtles have more of this sort of oval. Oh, yeah, super streamlined. <laughs> yeah, this more oval, sort of thinner, sort of profile shell. And you just went with, like, I am immune to all harpoons. Come at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think there's something about it that makes it feel old. And that these are, like, I don't know, like, gross. I, I don't know. I didn't think of them as, like, tumorous. But one of those things that like the like the CR seventeen dragon turtle that's as strong as most like adult dragons like that's several hundred years old like it is an old beast and so like it does like I do imagine the shell eventually becoming less streamlined but like when they're younger I bet they I would imagine them being more uh, being slightly more streamlined. But you do need those, like, little changes to make them more dragon-like, I guess? I don't know. It's kind of... You know what? I think I do like the concept of the dragon turtle not having just straight-up, like, um, sea turtle flippers. Because it does need, like... Turtles also have a digging technique but um i think it'd be a little i don't know i i can't put my words together but i'm just gonna go with this what this group of phrases um i think it'd be a little disappointing if all the dragon turtle had to menace ships was just a chomp um yeah. it's a lot more it adds a lot more um options 
to design it with more of a claw type scenario than it is with just like a I can chomp your rudder off or I can slap your boat. <laughs> right. I don't, I I think a tail attack. I mean all tr of the like the true dragons have a tail attack, but it makes me laugh every time I see like that a dragon turtle has a tail attack. I'm like, I guess we're most turtles in general and tortoises do not have substantial tails oh yeah that's what but i was okay. internally laughing about before too is that you you uh, we saw you go through a bunch of different like um position and um angle concepts and then you went with this one the one that omits the tail entirely and then upon looking back at what was of the coast provides as a reference to the dragon turtle they too omit <laughs> omit the entire back end of their dragon turtle so it's just like yeah it's got a tail attack <clears throat> it yep. has one we don't trust us <laughs> yeah that's the magic of the dragon turtle they have a phantom tail <laughs> But I in this one, it's there kind of. It's like below, but I'm actually, I don't know. All right, it, it's kind of curving around the ship on the far left. But really, if we were like following this path of action, it kind of looked like it's swimming up and it's like a whale birching um, or breaching, not birching, uh, breaching the water and then it's going to crash down. And so it really, it should be curving down in like a big C curve under it. But Oh, well, I already drew it. <laughs> and then in seeing that you did the the dimpling for the um, scales? What the hell do amphibians have? Um, anyways, the dimpling on the skin on his arm. Um, it reminded me that I was so glad that the drag that the um, D and D team didn't design the dragon turtle towards like a slider turtle or something because mm. um which that... i think would be fun of like exploring like because i think the dragon turtle is either an ancient or a, a like an adult dragon like you judging by its power level and stuff um uh so it, like they should like other dragons should have like a young and a wormling version of them as well as like i would love to see a a swamp uh, and a desert dragon turtle and tortoise. They should. Which I think the... was like a missed out thing of like the turtle NPC or not the turtle uh, like humanoid class or like race is that like most fifth edition D and D races have like their it's their race and then each of them have sub race and I really should have I thought that they should have had like turtle and then sub races of like you know swamp turtle like desert turtle like ocean turtle. But, you know, it's, I'll say that Wizard of the Coast was being very smart and saying, like, we're going to leave it open so people can make homebrews because they like doing that shit. Yeah, um, as an amateur who is trying to also, like, take that design and make it into something else, I was just, um, the end portion of that idea was... I'm glad they didn't go with something like the desert tortoise or the slider turtle because those two examples have very intricate designs on their shell. <laughs> um, and mm. it would have driven me crazy to try to think of how I would... Um, I already have a lot of... Because I don't do it a lot. I already have a lot of problems with UV uh, like unwrapping and then texture based upon their on the UV layout. Uh, mm. so the best that I can do is more or less of what, you know, like a bump map type thing or just taking vertices and just raise, like just ripping them up like I did here. Um, cause yeah, that's a nightmare for me, but, uh, it, I mean, obviously you've done a bunch of shading, so it would be very interesting actually in your court to see that kind of thing where you have all the little, like cool little eye you know like the eyeballs of certain things or like a cool little yeah and i put a little bit on the, like the chest of the dragon turtle yeah i saw that that's what kind of reminded me of that of that fear <laughs> earlier it's uh just brought that up yeah yeah mm -hmm. i like I, I had fun with it i was struggling to be honest um 
on like getting it right. But near the end, like I'm I'm happy with this, and I'm I'm happy with this weird ass color that I got. That like I think <laughs> lately you guys have been seeing me add more and more color on certain pieces, and this like color set was like I don't know, it was a pleasure. So I think I might be doing more color since I've been doing it anyways. We'll yeah, that, I mean, that's I'm exactly like. Kind of technically according to the schedule you were supposed to be presenting first but i saw yours and i was just like no <laughs> you're, you're going last because that's that's a lot that's a lot better to the eye <laughs> i think well, thank you <laughs> i wonder if i should make the mask open oh well it's not ever going to be a functional thing ever so <laughs> whatever All right It'd be interesting to see a lineup of different pirates because I don't think pirates are known for their uh, uniformity of their like outfits. To see like our, each different pirate's like interpretation of their turtle armor. It would be a good visual or a good narrative aspect to kind of let the DM give hints to the players as to what sort of pirate like they're dealing with. So you have the the warrior pirates that are in much like this sort of thing where it's plate <laughs> sort of um adjacent or you have mm -hmm. the rogue pirates that are you know that are in just more of like the more casual sort of stuff but they've got like dragon turtle claw looking like fan paddles or something you know and then you've got the um the rogue that's got like the the steam breath cannon <laughs> or something it's funny as like a partially polynesian person uh there's a part of me that like um wants that lose like uh those representations of oneself in fantasy and stuff and like of other cultures and so like i have like certain boards and stuff that start building of just like uh Polynesian fantasy things and like if anybody's played like the Mark of Cree, like I have like it like it's starting to like it's been warming itself into my head of like man would it be so cool to like have like I don't know like a whole fantasy setting that is more the different islands and like where like dragons are a thing that you hear about but dragon turtles are a thing that you deal with like <laughs> and like all the different sea creatures and like Krakens and Kraken pe uh, priests and like the different armors and weapons and like I don't know like a an oar is such a like a a basic thing that most people wouldn't call it a weapon but like really carrying weapons is a difficult thing like I have an oar I use the oar I learn how to use the oar as a weapon and if I learn how to put a couple spikes on this this is a pretty good ass thing that I can still use as an oar. Yeah, that would be another cool sort of um redesign using the dragon turtle flavor is i mean it would be really simple which is why i didn't like decide yeah that's what i'm going to totally present is <laughs> um a dragon turtle shell spike club i mean i was going to say tetsubo but i i think like only 25 percent of people really know what that term means <laughs> um mm -hmm. but yeah just like this big I don't really know how many pirates would actually have that. Like, maybe the bosun might. Like, the dude that, like, gives out the orders on the ship. Because mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have to run around all over the place. But, um, yeah, it would be really interesting to see the dragon turtle proper. But then just see, like, the sort of nomadic... I don't know about followers, but just those that like super respect the, the turtle and then try to sort of gain favor by like working for it, even though the dragon turtle either does not really acknowledge them, he just sort of accepts their presence, or is totally in on it, is just like a mob boss. <laughs> it's like the dragon mm -hmm. turtle mafia. <laughs> dragon turtle mafia. <laughs> Yeah, my new ska band's coming out in December. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I can't wait to see all your instruments that are made out of different dragon turtle things. <laughs> uh, I hate it.
Um, okay, so what is... So that is the dragon turtle. I believe that is it for the dragons, finally. So what do we Yeah, until we hit fairy dragons. Uh, and pseudo dragons. Are those actually dragons, or are they like kobolds where they don't really count? I... I think they fall much like the dragon turtle into that category of, yeah, I think they're they're dragons, but they're in the false dragon area. I and then we could do Drake. I don't know. I, I don't. I can't remember if in the regular monster manual if drakes are in there. I think drakes are considered beasts, constructs. Fifth edition did something weird. No, fourth edition did something weird with the Drakes that fifth edition kind of. I don't remember if they retconned that or if they kept it. But Drakes yeah. are in a weird situation now because they were a construct at one point, the same as a flesh golem. And it was very weird. <laughs> it was very mm. strange. Um, whereas before, they were just kind of like a bestial version of a dragon, like just a dumb, like lesser cousin or something. Um, alphabetically on my list, I have Zedrider for next week or for Ooh. next session. So, uh, we get to do some creepy, crawly, arachnophobic type stuff. Yay. Oh, God, yeah, that's I a mean, lot of like... detail. I get to just stick a person on things again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's that's true for you. I mean, you get to have a lot of fun with like angles and triangles and trapezoids with hopefully maybe you do some spider webbing. Do driders actually do. use do they have um web walk or yeah they do. How? They do. They're so big and heavy. But they don't necessarily have a workable web technique that's interesting so they, yeah so they use other things tech like webs very weird but i and which we will get into but they have such an interesting history <laughs> i can't time. remember if they're supposed to be like because in the Dritz novels, they were they were a punishment. They were they were the they were the depiction of punishment. Whereas if you were if you were amazing and awesome and did everything correctly, you got to remain in your humanoid form. But I've read in other pl I've, like I've run into certain campaigns where the Drider was almost like a wanted aspect. So I don't I don't, yeah, I don't know really know how that works. I mean, I guess it depends on your story and, like, who's telling it. I guess so. So, in any case, um, that has been our hour for this week, or for this session, um, and that has been the Dragon Turtle. Uh, next time we will do, or we will attempt to do, the Drider. And, as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to attempt to check us out we are live on sundays at 2 p.m uh, yeah 2 p.m and um coming up in the month of september um this channel on twitch.tv that's twitch.tv slash foxstar f-o-x-s-t-a-r-r -R underscore um we will be doing a where we will be joining our efforts into the charity stream with um Variety Children's Charity and Super Animal Royale to help raise money for um, assistance dogs that help with children. Um... Shit, I thought I had this memorized by now. Um, it's like one portion of the dog's job is comfort so that if a, if a child starts having... Um, so bad at this right now um <laughs> it down they, the, it, they, uh, they calm the them down they calm them down for children with epilepsy i know that's one of them um what's the other one uh it's gonna be real weird but yeah so it's it's basically helping dogs that help children <laughs> um that that really need it and it's a cause that I'm willing to get behind and 
hopefully if y'all have some time and um, want to laugh at my failures and such, um, please feel free to tune in. Uh, even do you have anything that's worth mentioning to the public? <laughs> oh, no, nothing at all. all Enjoy right, sweet. checking out my Instagram. See me at evenstarlong on Instagram. And you guys can see just the art that I make, which is mostly a lot of this because I have been swamped at work because I make other things there. <laughs> so as always, thank you for tuning in and we hope to catch you next time. Bye. Bye.